Hello, Mrs. Gibson. I'm so glad you could come. I wouldn't miss celebrating little Joe's birthday, Ben. Well, neither would he. Of course, when you're his age, I guess you don't mind birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be down in a moment. He's just taking care of those last finishing touches. <laughs> Let's join the others. You know, you work on that left side a little more, you'll be a thing of beauty. Hmm, thank you. Oh, Ann Wilson will certainly be overcome. Unless she stands downwind of you. <laughs> Out of my way, peasant. Seriously, Joe, why did you work so hard at uh, getting Ann Wilson to come? Uh, just one reason, she never gets out. Her uncle keeps her in the house. That poor kid never goes anywhere. You know something, younger brother? I've always thought of you as being something of a Lothario, but I think you're getting to be a good Samaritan. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, speaking of good Samaritans, I hope you got me a decent present this year for a change. Oh, Now, you, you see if you can slide the wheel on while I hold this thing up. Please hurry, Uncle Fred. It's getting late and little Joe's gonna worry. <sighs> Drat little Joe. Him and his parties. I'll get this thing fixed if it's the last thing I ever do. What's the matter, Uncle Fred? Sick. Help. Help me, Ann. I... Uh, what can I do? I can't... Will you make me that night? Make me that night. Make me that night. Wallace, woman, will you make me that night? I love me under the moon. Someone's coming. Get help. Hurry, hurry. Get away with me. Get away with you. The Wallace, woman, I'll be gentle with you. Help. Please you help. Woo. 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 Oh, easy, little woman. Easy. What are you doing out here alone this time of night? My uncle's sick. Help me take him to the Ponderosa. The Ponderosa? It just so happens I'm on my way there now. It surely am. Well, where is your uncle? Down there. Well, come on. Uncle Fred! All right, now, step aside. Let me look at it. Your uncle's not sick, little girl. He's dead. Oh! oh. All right, now, calm, calm down. Calm down. These, these things happen. They surely do. Calm down. There. There. That's, that's better. That's better. Yeah. My. My, your, your hair's so shiny. It's soft silk. My, your skin, skin is so, so soft. <laughs> Some of them would never leave. <laughs> it was a good party. Oh, it was a wonderful party. Joseph, that's the best birthday party I've ever attended. Yeah, I must say, I think it went pretty well. Incidentally, the Wilson girl never showed up, did she? Yeah, can you imagine that? I practically had to force her uncle into promising to bring her here. Yeah, yeah it's kind of surprising. Fred Wilson isn't the easiest man in the world to get along with, but once he gives his word on something, he... oh, I'm tired. Let's go to bed. Huh? Yeah, I need my rest, too. You know, I'm a year older. Yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Gibson, what's the matter? What happened? It's terrible. 
Well, that's it. Now, just sit down and take it easy. Now, what is it? What is it? What happened? It's Fred Wilson. He's back there on the road. <laughs> what about Fred Wilson? Mrs. Gibson, what about Fred Wilson? He's dead. Mrs. Gibson, what about Anne? Was she there? I didn't see her. I didn't see anyone. Except Fred. I think he's breathing, Paul. Yeah, give us pulse. Mr. Wilson? Mr. Wilson, can you hear me? He's conscious, Paul. He heard me. Well, better get him to the doctor as soon as possible. Is Anne with you? Mr. Wilson, where's Anne? Mr. Wilson? Can't answer you. He said some sort of stroke. Maybe Anne went to get some help. The closest place is the Ponderosa. Had some kind of a stroke. Give us a hand. See Anne on the way? No. We better start looking for her. Better take him into Doc Martin's right away. Sure, this is Anne? I've seen her word lots of times. It's funny she didn't get to the Ponderosa. I wonder which way she went. If anything's happened to her. Oh, stop jumping to conclusions. I convinced her uncle to let her go to that party. Look, let's get back to the ranch and organize a proper search. <laughs> Little Joe Cartwright, it surely is. Nice to see you, boy. That's a fact. Hi, Mr. Poole. That's right. Thought you might have forgotten. Poole the Thunderman, in person. We, uh, we expected you yesterday. Oh, yes, I know, but I got a late start from Carson City. Just drove into town this very minute. I hope the delay didn't discommode you. Uh, I surely do. I hope that I. Oh, no, I no, didn't, Mr. Uh... Poole. It's fine. It's fine. Excuse me, will you? Uh, yeah. The girl at the Undertaker's. I'll be back in a little while, Ben. Keep an eye on our uncle for me till I get back. Excuse me, sir. 
Er, uh, you Mr. Cartwright? Yeah? Oh, I'm a friend of Little Joe's. My name is Poole. Little Joe watched me at work in Carson City. Oh! Of course, the explosives man. How are you, Mr. Poole? Fine, sir. Well, actually, we sort of expected you yesterday. Uh, I hope the delay caused no trouble for you. I do, oh, in no, fact. Oh, no, no, of course not. As a matter of fact, I'm glad you're here. Yeah, I arranged with some neighboring ranchers to see your demonstration tomorrow at the Ponderosa. Well, I'll be there bright and early, sir, and I hope your neighbors enjoy my work. I'm sure we all will, Mr. Poole. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, I noticed that little Joe seemed sort of discommoded. And then I heard the doctor mention the undertakers. Well, actually, it was a friend of little Joe's, a lovely girl. We found her this morning, dead, just 19 years old. Dear heaven, just 19. You were right, Ben. Clear case of murder. Whoever it is is a powerful man or a complete maniac. Her neck was broken. Excuse me, I want to take another look at Mr. Wilson. Uh, Mr. Cartwright. The, uh, the Mr. Wilson the doctor just mentioned. Would that be the girl's uncle? Yeah, he's, he's in there. Well, that surely is a blessing that he didn't die. It surely is. But I'll tell you one thing, sir. It isn't a blessing me coming here bothering you good folks in the midst of all this trouble. It, it surely isn't. Now, little Joe, I, I'm very sorry. I had no idea that you'd be in the midst of all this trouble. I'll go away and come back next week. Mr. Poole. Yes, sir. Mr. Poole, I think that... I think it might be better if you went through with the demonstration. After all, you, you did come a long way. And... My neighbors have made their arrangements. They've set time aside to, to see this demonstration. I, I think perhaps you should go through with it, if you don't mind. Well, sir. Please, I... you'd be doing me a favor. Can I go in and talk to him yet? Talk to him? Yeah, he might have seen something last night. Might be able to help us find the killer. How? He's paralyzed. He can't talk. Well, let me try. No. Because you won't be doing him any good, and you'll just be wasting your own time. Look, Doc, I've got luck. He's in good hands, Joseph. All right, maybe he is in good hands. But is he safe? What do you mean, safe? Look, sooner or later, the killer's gonna find out he's alive. He's gonna know he's a danger to him. Then what's gonna happen? Can you guard him 24 hours a day, Doc? No. But even if Fred does know who the killer is, he can't tell anyone. Well, the killer doesn't know that. Doctor... What Joseph says makes some sense. I just think he'd be better off out at the ranch. Would it hurt to move him? Not any more than he's hurt already. There's nothing more I can do here. Just keep him quiet and send for me if there's any change. Well, we'll see that he's well taken care of. Do you have a stretcher or something? That... Yes, yes, of course. Help yourself. May I be of any help, Mr. Cartwright? Well, thank you. The more hands we can get, the better. You must be careful with this poor man. Even a Thunder Man has to be careful of that stuff. Here it comes. The greatest power on Earth. Mr. Poole, is it all right to uh, go closer and have a look? Surely, Mr. Cartwright. Come along. Well, Mr. Cartwright, what do you think? Well, that's sure impressive. Sure impressive. 
Mr. Poole, with a demonstration of this sort, you, you're not going to have any trouble finding work around here. Well, thank you, sir. Wasn't that amazing, Ben? Amazing, absolutely amazing. Why, those south acres of mine could be cleared in no time. I want to be one of your first customers, Mr. Poole. Oh? Well, uh, which one of these five gentlemen is your husband, ma'am? I'm a widow. Oh. I'm truly sorry, ma'am. It's just... Well, I never thought such an attractive woman could be... so unattached, you might say. You seem to be as uh, accomplished with words as you are with nitro, Mr. Poole. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, Mrs. Gibson, as soon as I'm through here at the Cartwrights, you'll be my first customer. Of course. I understand. You know, I thought of something that might solve a small problem. Oh, what's that? Ladies first. Why don't I take care of Mrs. Gibson's acres first and then come back here when your son's feeling better? Mr. Poole, that might be a very good idea. If it's all right with Mrs. Gibson. Of course, Ben. Would you like to start tomorrow? Bright and early, ma'am. Bright and early. Will you tell Mr. Poole how to get to my place, Ben? Of course I will. My. Such a pretty woman to be sorrowed. My widowhood. How is he upset? He seemed just about the same. I can see it in his eyes. He wants to talk so badly, but he can't. Yes, little Joe. He's the same. Sure wish he could talk. Well, there's not much chance of that, according to Doc Martin. I have to ride over to Genoa, take a look at those McPherson yearlings. You want to come along? No, I don't think so, Adam. Why don't you come on? We'll be there a couple of days. Do you good. I said I don't want to. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I understand. It's any comfort to you. I saw the deputy and his men on the road this morning. They're coming the area. Maybe they'll come up with something. Well, they better. You've worked very hard all day, Mr. Poole. I thought you might like to clean up before supper. Well, thank you, ma'am. That's mighty kind of you. You know, working with explosives does something to a man. It does for a fact. You turn your life to it, and all the gentle things escape you. They certainly do. You're just a lowly traveling man with a fistful of thunder. This house becomes you, ma'am. It surely does. Ben Cartwright was right. You do have a way with words, Mr. Poole. You can wash up over there. Thank you, ma'am. You said you were lonely a moment ago. I know how it is to be lonely. My husband's been gone five years now. To lose someone you love? That's the lonesomest time of all. Did you? Yes, I did, ma'am. There was a girl I loved. Her hair was shiny. Her skin was soft. She came near where I was wiring. I wired careless. I didn't understand explosives then. She was caught up in the explosion. I swore I'd never touch glycerine again. No, I wouldn't. Terrible. I tried to run from it. There's no running from glycerine once you've touched it. It's something that reaches out for you, pulls at you. It's like something from another world. Touch it and mountains change, rivers turn. You're a thunder man. That's, that's what you are. Yes, it is. Well, no, I'm sorry, ma'am. I hope you can forgive me for going on this way, but a man has to tell his thoughts to someone. 
Would you mind getting me a towel? The nearness of a woman. The soft and gentle things. I sure do miss them, ma'am. I surely do. Mr. Poole, a man like you would be very handy around a ranch. Did you ever think of settling down? Yes, I did, ma'am. But never really seriously. Maybe you should, Mr. Poole. Well, maybe I should at that. We'll have supper in a little while. Thank you, ma'am. Then I think I'll go over to the Ponderosa and tell them that I need a little more time here than I reckon. You surely have a large place here, ma'am. You surely do. I'll go get supper. Now, well, it's going to be a little stiff, Paul, but you get over it. Sounds like we got visitors. It's Mr. Poole. Yeah, probably came to see little Joe. Hey, Paul, bring that light back. Oh, Stand out the widow Gibson's. Oh, hello, little Joe. Yes, I am. But Mrs. Gibson was very worried about uh, poor Mr. Wilson here, so I thought I'd ride over and see how he was. Looks like we woke him up. Let's go outside. Yeah. Sorry about the way I came walking in. I surely am, but there didn't seem to be anybody here. Huh? Well, good night, Joe. Oh, by the way, did they find anything out about who did that terrible thing? Yeah, they're still looking, I guess. Sheriff Coffey's out of town. That new deputy of his couldn't find fleas on a dog. <laughs> yes, but he's still deputy, ain't he? I suppose that's what they call him. I'm gonna ride into town tomorrow, make sure he's doing something about it. Well, a man does what he has to do, but these things are best left to the authorities. They surely are. Well, good night, Joe. See you in a few days, as soon as I finish up with the widows, right? Good night. Seen Joe Cartwright? I hear you've been looking for me. I've been over to your office three times. Well, here I am. What do you want? Do you have any leads on the Ann Wilson case? I'm afraid not. I'm having a tough time making any headway, Joe. No witnesses, no starting point. Not a blamed thing to go on. I've covered that road for ten miles. Oh, there must be something. Killers have something in common. They don't like to get caught. Well, most of the people in the area were at our party. Now, if you just question the others... I've been you... questioning the others. Another thing about killers, ask them if they killed somebody, they'll usually say no. And you mean everybody else has an alibi for the I whereabouts? I mean everybody. I've checked them all. Drummers, cattlemen, even strangers that have come into town, like that pool, the explosives man. 
pool. What do you check him for? He wasn't even in town when Ann was killed. I know that. That's why I checked, to be sure. Yeah, well, maybe you're checking the wrong people. When's Sheriff Coffey get back in town? Joe, Roy's a good sheriff, but I'm a good deputy. That's your opinion, Glenn. I'm doing everything Roy would have done. Except find the killer. Now, maybe I ought to start looking myself. Now, you listen to me, young fella. Oh, now, don't start that young fella. You'll go to sticking your nose on. in my business, and you'll wish you hadn't. Now, you better get on home and stay there, young fella. Well, somebody better start sticking their nose in your business, Clem, because you can't seem to handle it. Now, you better come up with something and come up with it fast. Who's that? It's me, Pa. I thought you were helping Hoss out with the branding. No, I went into town. What for? See the deputy. Uh, do you have anything to report? No, nothing. Of course, he does now. Oh, go ahead. What happened? I made a fool of myself. Tried to tell Clem how to do his job. Guess he got pretty mad. I know how you feel about Clem, Joe, but you've got to put this thing right out of your mind. Forget it. I wish I could, Pa, but I... I just can't forget that I went out of my way to make Mr. Wilson bring Anne to that party. Joseph, we all do things in our life for which we're sorry. But that doesn't mean that we... we must torment ourselves for the rest of our lives. But if I had just minded my own business... Anne and Mr. Wilson would have been safe at home that night. Oh, I see this. It was only something I could do. If I could only find out who did it, I... There was only some way you could tell me. Tell me something. Could you write? Oh, God, could you write? Look at your paper. My pawn bring the paper. Yeah, what is it? Oh, he moved his hand. I think he can write. Now, Joseph, you mustn't disturb him. I asked him who the killer was, and he moved his hand. He wants to tell us. Understand. Mr. Wilson, are you trying to say the killer is a woman? Who is it? Easy, Joe. Let me try. Fred, if, if you know who the, the killer was, would you please write down his name? It's too weak even to hold the pencil. Wait a minute, there's another way. Mr. Wilson, you can close your eyes, can't you? Show me.
All right, now I'm going to ask you some questions. If the answer is yes, close your eyes. If the answer is no, leave them open. Do you understand? Good boy. He understands. All right, here's the first question. You wrote New Orleans woman. Was the killer a woman? No, I didn't think so. What can he mean, New Orleans woman? I don't know. Mr. Wilson, do we know the killer? He says we know him. Whoever it is, we know him. Yeah, but well, we know an awful lot of people around here. Joe, when I was down in Louisiana, there's a song. New Orleans woman. A song. Mr. Wilson, is that what you mean? Is New Orleans woman a song? You're right. Now, now whoever it was, whoever the killer was, was he singing that song? That's it. I can't remember how the song goes. That man, Fred, was he here at the Ponderosa? Oh, we're so close. If... so hard. We're all set, yeah. Yeah, Wait a second, I'll be right on. Boss, I want you to give this to the deputy. Yes, sir. And make sure you tell him exactly how Fred Wilson came to write that down. Right. You better get going now. Well, as soon as Joe gets back. No, get going now. Yeah, but Paul. I want you to go into town alone. Yeah, right. in such a big hurry for? I told him to go into town without you. Why? Come inside, I want to talk to you. Oh, wait a minute, Pa, I want to go into town now. Inside, Joseph. Talk. I don't want you to go into town. What do you mean you don't want me to go into town? Why? Well, you know what happened the last time. You made a fool of yourself. You admitted that. That's not going to happen again. Well, what do you want me to do? Stand around here and do nothing? Just forget all about it? I want you to stop losing your temper. Criticizing the deputy isn't going to help matters. He's just doing his job. Now, Hoss will tell him what happened here with Mr. Wilson, and we'll have done our legal duty. Fine. Also, there's one other thing. We could take one step beyond our legal duty. Now, what's that mean? Well, Mrs. Gibson plays the organ at the church. She's a pretty good musician. Now, maybe she knows the song, New Orleans Woman. Sure beats a heck out of standing around here. Thanks, Pa. What brings you over here? Hi, Miss Gibson. I wonder if I could come in and talk to you for a second. Well, of course. Come in. Thank you. Is the pool still on the job? Oh, he finished blasting the first section this morning. Now he's piling the stumps to burn them. He's a pretty fast worker. Yes, he is. Here's the reason why I came over here. I had a question for you. I know you knew a lot about music. Have you ever heard of a song called New Orleans Woman? New Orleans Woman? I don't think so. Hmm. Maybe it's in one of these songbooks over here. Why are you so interested in a song, little Joe? I never knew you were musically inclined. I'm not especially, ma'am. Just this particular song. Here it is. New Orleans Woman. But do you think you can play it for me? Of course. New Orleans Woman, will you be? Meet me tonight, meet me tonight. 
New Orleans woman, will you meet me tonight and love me under the moon? <laughs> Silly little thing, isn't it? Why are you so interested? Just never heard it before. I wanted to see how it goes. It's the kind of tune that sort of rattles around in your head, isn't it? New Orleans woman, will you meet me tonight? Meet me tonight, meet me tonight. New Orleans woman, will you meet me tonight? And love me under the moon. It is sort of romantic, little Joe. Mrs. Gibson, Mr. Wilson died this afternoon. Oh, no. Oh, no, that poor man. Before he died, he wrote three words on a piece of paper. Trying to leave a clue as to who killed Anne. Clue? What do you mean? Whoever murdered Anne was singing that song, New Orleans Woman. Oh, what a terrible thing. That's why I came out here, I wanted you to play it. I thought if I heard the song, I might be able to remember back to someone I heard singing it. I can't. I want to thank you very much, though. I, I'd better be getting on back to the ranch. Thanks again. Is that Joe Cartwright I just saw leaving here? Yes. Yes, it was. What's the matter? Something wrong? They think they have a clue to Ann Wilson's killer. You don't say. You don't say for a fact. Yes, little Joe believes that whoever killed that poor girl was singing this song. New Orleans woman. Don't believe I ever heard that one before. Well, I think I have. Have you? Where? That's just it. I can't recall where. I can just keep thinking about it. Couldn't have been at the concert at the Opera House. It's too cheap a piece for that. New Orleans woman, will you meet me tonight? Meet me tonight. Meet me tonight. Mm -hmm. No, I can't remember. It. it was somebody whistling it. I. Whistling, Mrs. Gibson? Who did you hear whistling it? I. I don't think I can remember. I. I think I'd better be going. Where do you think you're going, my dear? Well, I. I think I'll go over to the Ponderosa. I... I think I ought to speak to little Joe. You see, I don't think I understood everything. No, ma'am. I don't think you should go over to the Ponderosa. Please. Please let me go. Don't be frightened, little widow. It was mighty careless of me to whistle that tune in front of you yesterday. It surely was. But you can't be blamed for having too good a memory. You surely can. Please, please. You know, you're really quite attractive. Yes, you are. We could have been very happy here. Just the two of us. You did it. You did it. You killed Ann Wilson. Lovely hair. So soft, fragrant, shiny. Skin. So, so cool. Sweet. It's 
too bad. It really is. But there's no other way. I'm afraid. There's no other way. Uh, next time, you just better watch where you're going. She said he was all through blasting. We better check it out, Coach. This is Gibson? Mrs. Gibson? Mrs. Gibson, you up there? What happened? Poor, poor woman. Poor woman. I told her to stand back. Poor thing. Her neck's broken. Part of the stump must have... Oh, she was such a wonderful woman. So sweet and so kind. She was so sorry for me, wandering the countryside. She, she wanted me to settle down. We even talked about me staying on here. Well, I, I was just here a little while ago. She said you were through blasting for the day. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, I had. All except one little stump, which, which I wasn't even going to bother with. Right close to a fence it was. Wouldn't have been in the way of a plow at all. Why did you bother with it, then? Well, you know women when they pay for something. She came out there a little while ago and insisted on me blowing out that little stump, and then somehow she... she got in the way and... Poor thing. There was nothing I could do. Nothing. You should better make room in your wagon. We'll have to take her into town. Yeah. Yes, of course, little Joe. Sure is a sad business. Surely is. I swear I'll never touch nitro again. I swear it! Never! Strange. Page ripped out of Mrs. Gibson's songbook. Could have done that. Well, I couldn't even guess. That's a fact. Like I said, I just left here a little while ago. The book was all right then. You haven't been back in the house since I left, have you, Paul? Me? Of course not. Not till just now, when I brought her in from the field. Of course, you can't tell about women, little Joe. They do the dangest things. They really do. How about this? Rip a page out of her own songbook and tear it to bits as though she were angry? What for? song the killer was singing the night he murdered Anne. Mrs. Gibson wouldn't tear it up. Well, if she didn't, I surely can't guess who did, and that's a fact. Well, I can. Well, what do you mean, little Joe? I mean, I think you and I ought to go in town and see the deputy pool. Well, little Joe, if you want me to go into town and see the deputy... I... All right, pool. Get up in the wagon. We're going to town. Are you accusing me of murdering Mrs. Gibson? I'm not accusing you of anything. Just want you to go into town and talk to the deputy. It's like you said, Mr. Pool. These things are better left to the authorities. Yes, I said that. But not this time. Go on, put it down. That's not going to do you any good this time. I think it will. You throw your gun over there, little Joe. 
right now. You shouldn't have mixed in. You really shouldn't have. Of course, now I'm going to have to report that two nice people got too close to one of my explosions. How many others were there, Poole, besides Anne and Mrs. Gibson? Why? Now, why, uh... I, I don't rightly know, and that's a fact. It's like nitro. One wrong move and things change. You mean they die? Why was it always women? They resist me. With their fair skin and their shiny hair. I want to touch them. But they never understand. They resist me. So then you kill them. But you don't understand. I'm the power and the thunder and the lightning. Oh, no, Poole, you're just a man. A very, very sick man. I'm a thunder man! And no power in heaven or on earth can touch me!